Hey, good morning, good morning. This is Sean Sandridge coming to you with a very extremely late video. Happy Saturday. I'm gonna make this my intro. I wanna say thank you for those of you who have been hanging out with me and supporting me because I have been off of YouTube for quite some time. But this is why I tell you guys to check me out on my other social media platforms because even though I haven't been giving you videos, I have been very busy on IG. You can catch me on IG. You can catch me on Periscope. And you can catch me on Twitter. But I've been on IG almost every day. Same name, keeping it simple. So, I have a video that I did over a week ago and I couldn't even do the video in one setting so you will see me in different clothes because that is how busy my life has been but that's okay I'm gonna come back later with a video because I'm on my way to Chicago and I am gonna go to the bod pod also known as the body pod and I'm gonna get my body fat tested. I am nervous and excited, but if you want to make a change, you got to know where you're starting at. So, enjoy this video that I am finally giving to you. Take care of yourself and each other, and I will come back later with another video about my results getting my body fat tested. See you later. Bye. Hey guys, this is Sean Sandridge, and I have been gone for a bit, but I am here to say hello and thank you for stopping by my channel. So it has been quite a bit. I'm just going to have some chit chat. Happy Friday to you, and I hope you are doing well. I am doing okay. So listen, I'm just here to do a little chit chat, and a, I just want to do a, a review. First, I just want to say, how's everyone doing? For those of you who who have been on to on my channel for a while hello I miss you guys and for those of you who are new subscribers I am so sorry that I have not been on camera for quite some time but this is a good time to give a plug have you checked me out on my other social media platforms you can check me out on Periscope which I was on last week you can check me out on Instagram which is where I am quite busy and you can check me out on Twitter, although I haven't been tweeting because there hasn't been any shows, but you can find me on all those other social media platforms. Same name, keeping it simple. So I am out and about and a lot has been going on. And I'll be honest, I have been off track because it's very difficult. You know, I was sick in April and it has been very difficult getting back on track since I was sick. Um, I started feeling better around Mother's Day and life has been busy so for those of you who have been following me on Instagram you will know that a lot has been going on of course I had my daughter's prom and then I had uh, some family stuff uh, Mother's Day my mother-in-law's birthday uh, there has been something going on every weekend uh, then we had graduation, we had an impromptu uh, party, just an informal thing, Father's Day, and now I'm having my daughter's graduation party tomorrow. And so I have been exceptionally busy. And of course, uh, the next week, can you believe it? For those of you who have been following me since the beginning, uh, next week is going to mark my one year anniversary in business. I am so excited. We are celebrating our first business, our first year in business. It has been something else. And this year flew by. It flew by. And those of you who have been on this journey with me since the beginning, you know that it has not been without some bumps in the road. But I have to say, looking back, reflecting back, um, it has been a great decision. And of course, uh, a different set of stressors, and so that has not gone away. But yeah, it has been something 
that has been testing my my patience and abilities and has been stretching me outside of my comfort zone. So it has been a great first year experience. Um, my husband and I, we were talking yesterday and he says that he thinks that this is going to be our best year to date ever in, in business. So um, we have been busy and uh, we enjoy our employees and we are having a good time. So. So that's going on for that. So I wanted to, because I haven't been uh, reviewing anything. I do know, I guys, I know I promised you guys I would review House of Cards. I haven't had a ch chance to sit down, but I'm gonna do it and I'm just going to catch up and I'm gonna do the reviews and I'm just going to time them. But don't worry, it'll get done. It'll be late, obviously, but it'll get done. So I just wanted to do a review recap on an HBO, um, documentary that I saw if you don't have HBO that's fine you can see it on YouTube and it's called mommy dearest and dead and what I want to tell you is that there is serious evil out in the world just serious evil out in the world and I know a lot of people want to talk about you know deadbeat dads and there's a place for them but there are deadbeat moms and there are real pieces of work out there mothers and this is about a mother. Her name is Dee Dee, and she has a daughter named Gypsy Rose. And uh, this is a story of evil, deception, manipulation, uh, sex, lies, and text messages. And it has a lot to do with how one of the things that I have always been intrigued about crime stories is the psychology behind why people do what they do and this took place well the trial took place in 2015 so this is not uh, an old story however the things around it is is an old old type of thing so this woman, Dee Dee, is a mom, and she suffers from the condition known as Munchausen by proxy. Anyone who does not know what that is, it's when a, a caregiver, normally a female, specifically a parent, so in this case a mom, who will fake or inflict em, uh, mo medical conditions on a child in order to garner emotional gratification to get sympathy or empathy and that is her payoff it normally strikes women yes there have been men but we're talking about uh, the majority of these uh, people are women so Gypsy Rose is a healthy girl she's a healthy girl she was a healthy baby and Dee Dee inflicts all of these conditions on her since she was three months old and I tell you when I say evil you have a perfectly healthy child and they do this video where she is one years old and very clear that she's a smart little girl and she gives her all of these ailments from allergies to asthma and just think about a person who have healthy lungs having to take asthma medication I'm like who does that my son is on asthma medication and it's not fun it's not fun taking breathing treatments it's not fun taking you know maintenance medication so I can't even imagine having a healthy body and being you know inflicted with unnecessary medications uh, she has uh, leukemia heart murmur all of this stuff and when I say she has a pantry full of medications when they show the footage it is a pantry I mean just think of a closet full of medications that this girl healthy young girl has been inflicted uh, you know inflicted upon and then at 10 years old she's wheelchair bound mom shaves her head uh, letting her say well it's gonna fall out anyway so let's just shave it and of course, so if she's diagnosed with with leukemia, she's on, you know, cancer medication, and she has to take a breathing medication every night, 
and she said the most horrible thing was that she was given a feeding tube now this is something I did not know I didn't realize that when you have a feeding tube you know that that's given abdominally that it has to be changed out every six months but they don't put you under they don't numb you you have to get it taken out and reapplied and you're under no anesthesia or any kind of numbing and I thought how horrible like what kind of person would want to inflict pain on a person much less a child just to get this gratification but it, it's not without some perks for the mom because she got a house from Habitat of Humanity she they went to Disney World they went on award shows you know foundation things about you know she went to uh, Ron McDonald house so the mom got a lot of things and one of the reasons why Munchausen by proxy is so insidious is because a lot of these mothers know the lead, the medical background just as well as the doctors and in a lot of cases the parent has medical expertise you know they were either a nurse or they I'm at the bank or they or they um, they have some form of medical training so they are able to pretty much finagle their way to let doctors know you know kind of put them the scent on where they want them to go so she's now 24 oh and by the way she also Dee, Dee also doctors up the birth certificates hey how's it going I'm good she uh, doctors up the birth certificates so that Gypsy Rose is younger than she really is so Gypsy Rose has a dad and dad mm, what can I say he's a little uh, what's the right word I, I want to not be mean about it but I don't think he's completely connected I do know that Dee Dee did was very good at what she did as far as manipulating people but truth of the matter is is that her that the dad really didn't ask a lot of questions I think he came from the idea that Dee Dee's the mom mom knows best and I'm not gonna fight it and I'm not going to question her when he really should have questioned her so Dee Dee and the dad, they got married. He got her pregnant at 17. They got married. When he turned 18, he's like, why am I here? And so they part ways. So even though he was in Gypsy Rose's life, he obviously did, was not a hands-on dad. And the family, believe it or not, did not care for Dee Dee anyway. Um, Dee Dee had some problems. Like I said, she was a piece of work as a mom but she was even more a piece of work as a human being and the nephew had uh, was on the show and he was saying how he how she had you know kind of she had dealt with an identity theft she had opened up credit cards in, in his in his grandfather's name uh, she, she had stolen money she had been on uh, America's Most Wanted. I mean, she had criminal behavior. So her being deceptive was not a reach, you know? So her family did not care for her at all. She, there has been a cloud of suspicion that she may have starved her mother to death. The stepmother said that she tried to kill her by serving her Roundup in her food. So, you know, doing something that egregious was, was part of her personality. She was an evil person. Then, so what ended up happening? Oh, so when I was talking about um, Dee Dee was doctoring up her birth certificates, 
her dad went to call and say, you know, wanted to wish her a happy birthday. And so Dee Dee said, oh, well, don't, don't say happy 18th birthday because, you know, she doesn't know. And he's like, how does she not know that she's not 18? Well, for one, she made her behave very childlike. You know, there, there are milestones when just biologically you start maturing and Dee Dee made it very, you know, deceptive to let her know how old she was. And when you hear Gypsy Rose, in the beginning, it was quite annoying to hear her speak. And even when you see her later on, she still has a very childlike mind, even though chronologically, chronologically she's 24, but her mom really stunted the natural progression of her coming of age. So, the show opens up with her mother being, you know, she's murdered. Gypsy Rose had a boyfriend and her boyfriend murdered her mother. Now, one would say, why, why, how did this happen? Well, one, Dee Dee was very maniacal and very uh, deceptive and very manipulative. She did a lot of things to maneuver, to ma manipulate everybody from health professionals to my life, as I've been telling you. So, if you haven't noticed, I have on different clothes. You know why? Because when I spoke to you, it was Friday and now it is Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon and a lot has happened. Uh, I could not get through the video without getting phone calls, having client meetings and then before you know it, I am running around for my daughter's graduation party. So if you did not follow me on Instagram, you saw it all because I posted it on Instagram. Um, the whole spread and uh, it was a good time had by all uh, the adults had a lot of fun and uh, Whether the kids had fun or not the no one cared, but there was good food and good friends and it was all good. So uh, Yeah, so life has been crazy. So um, Talking about the boyfriend because I'm still trying to fi finish this recap of the movie. So the boyfriend has a uh, bondage sadomasochism type of fetish and he is protective over Gypsy Rose he tells her that he will protect her from anybody and so she tells him about her mother more than likely I'm gonna get through this video I hope so I'm waiting for the water department to come to this property anyway so uh, he uh, even though Gypsy doesn't say necessary to kill her they plan on it and they have this um, very naive way of thinking that they're going to ride off into the sunset. Um, he stabs her to death and he confesses. Uh, he confesses uh, and there's this, you know, very, again, talking about the boyfriend. I'm, I'm not sure if I said it before, but the boyfriend has Asperger's, um, which is a form of autism on the spectrum. Uh, and uh, he, by his own admission, feels that he has other mental health issues. And one thing uh, the interrogator asked is if uh, she had done anything, if he had done anything to the mother, because evidently he had explained to Gypsy Rose that he had a, uh, a rape fetish, that he wanted to rape her mother and so she made a deal with him that if she allowed him to rape her then she, he would not rape her mother now again you would wonder why would gypsy rose put herself in this situation well even though she did not feel comfortable about it she they, you know again her mother stunted her and i think a, along the pathology of being raised in an, in an environment of being manipulated she was very right for the situation and part of her felt that it was wrong to be with this guy felt that it was wrong to be involved with him but she you know this was her only normal that she had and she felt like she could be who she wanted to be with him um she was very torn 
anyway it goes along to the pathology of how twisted human nature can be you know so uh again Dee, Dee is not a likable uh person because no one felt bad about her death um and everyone felt badly about gypsy rose um the grandfather the stepmother uh felt that she had su survived and had been tortured enough and uh no one really cared about Dee. Dee. in fact um the father was saying she had gotten cremated and one of the sisters was like flush it down the toilet i don't want to have anything to do with it um and it goes again to a loved one, a sibling, that you don't even want to give a proper burial to uh, cremated remains, kind of attest to what kind of person Dee Dee was in real life. So at the end, uh, the prosecution decided not to give first degree murder but second degree murder with mitigating circumstances because in their minds was that we had to give justice for the victim who was the mother because she was murdered we can't let a death go unpunished uh, however we do know that the murderer uh, Gypsy Rose was also a victim and so they gave her 10 years and she has to serve uh, 85% so she's 24 and she'll get out when she's 32 I actually felt that it was the wrong punishment the strangest thing just someone just rolls up behind me my life and my business okay so uh, I really felt that that wasn't the right uh, sentence. I felt that she needed to go to a mental uh, institution and get deep, deep therapy to deal with um, the 24 years of being manipulative, being manipulated, almost like, you know, someone that's held captive, a hostage and being deprogrammed um, because she has no real sense of what healthy relationships are. She has no idea what's real. She has no idea of what reality is because she lived her life from three months old um, in, in a form of deception. So the dad and uh, the stepmom is there and visits her and she talks to her about her, her life. And, um, you know, it was sad because a lot of people did feel deceived, but they also understood why she was so deceptive. Um, again, you know, her friends have to reconcile with the fact that, you know, her friend, her, her friend Dee Dee, I mean, her friend Gypsy Rose wasn't handicapped, that she had total control over walking. However, you know, she lived this life for, you know, over 10 years saying that she was wheelchair bound. So, you know, she's got to, she's got to fix that. And uh, she did say she felt free. And she felt like this is the first time she could be honest and that her feeding tube in her abdomen was was healing up so you know she's gonna be young enough to still have a life i don't know what kind of life but again uh it goes back to show you that there are there's evil in this world and they can be in the form of a parental unit and so tell me what you think about uh have you ever heard of cases like this new charles and by proxy uh, let me know in the comments below. I got through this finally. Take care of yourself and each other. I will talk to you soon. <laughs> Bye.